Welcome to Monday, November 24th, 2025, your day weather podcast brought to you by the Advocates Injury Attorneys. If you've been injured in an accident, don't face it alone. Get an experienced local Wyoming attorney on your side. Free consultations at wyomingadvocates.com or call 307-800-1952. You deserve an advocate. Well, the winds change are coming. A lot of times when there's a major shift in the weather, you're going to get a period of wind as pressures are changing, temperatures are changing, and you're getting the jet stream stronger. And we're going to certainly see that if traveling over the next 72 hours, especially today and tomorrow, watch for high profile vehicles. You're going to get caught in some very strong gusty winds as we have a fast moving Canadian cold front coming across the northern tier of the U.S., northern rocking, especially the northern plains, as we go through today and tomorrow and into early Wednesday. This is going to produce the wind and some snow. Temperatures also tomorrow and Wednesday will be noticeably colder. And we're going to see the first shot of snow across the northern areas. So folks traveling across Montana, north, south Dakota, up into Minnesota, the first salvo of winter weather goes up into those areas. We're going to see northwest flow producing snow showers in the Rockies, mainly over the mountain passes as we get into Wednesday, Wednesday night, and maybe hanging on to Thursday morning. Thanksgiving Day itself and into early Friday doesn't look like much weather. However, there is going to be a little wave, it's looking like, a little plume of moisture comes in and especially the northern and central Rockies, there's going to be a little patch of snow coming through during the day Friday into early Saturday that we're going to need to watch. Then as we get into the weekend is when things get a lot more, let's say, interesting. We're going to see an Arctic surge drop out of Canada. At the same time, a trough of low pressure will get carved out over the Great Basin states. The Arctic surge and the Great Basin low will work together to produce more in the way of widespread winter conditions across the region. Some nice shots coming our way here, a nice sun pillar uh, showing up in Cheyenne yesterday evening. Not only did Jan pick that up, so did Kim. As you can see, a beautiful sun pillar there. Snow in the mountains of western New Mexico with this second or third, I think we'll call it the third upper level low to transit the desert southwest and southern Rockies over the last couple of weeks. And uh, good to see that moisture down there. They're looking for the moisture to arrive up there in the Bighorns, looking pretty brown up there. Beautiful shot from pheasant hunting cap in Draper, South Dakota this past weekend. Shot of Livermore, Colorado, the foothills, free of snow, at least for now. And as we take a look at these high and mid-level clouds increasing, and some clouds late last week almost look a little convective, almost look like a little bit of a thunder shower there with that frontal system that came on through. And here's a shot down in Leadville, Colorado, the mountains. This is with the upper level low that came through on Friday. And that area probably picking up a little bit more snow late yesterday and overnight today because here's that last in the series of the southwestern United States upper level lows in northwest Kansas this morning. You can see some clouds and some showers associated with it and some low clouds. So you can see that Southern California here is finally clear of these lows, but boy, that was a, a really good stretch of weather here for this part of the country to pick up some needed precipitation. The next upper level low associated with the cold front is up here in the Pacific Northwest and the water vapor shows it very well. The two systems. So we're in between systems today. So today gonna be fairly quiet, but this guy right here is causing a pressure gradient change and this is going to bring increasing wind. So around the noon hour today, you can see the tightening of the black lines here. See how they're packed close together? Winds aloft are getting really strong here and they're perpendicular to the Cascades and will be perpendicular to the Continental Divide as this wave moves quickly and it's moving along fast. There's a lot of upper level wind energy with this system and that is gonna harbor in the winds of change. By tomorrow at the same time, see how quickly it moves? It's gonna sweep down south and east, dragging colder Canadian air behind it. Pacific air on the northern edge of this system is gonna produce a band of snow as we get into later today, tonight and tomorrow. If traveling up there, you're gonna run into some winter driving conditions. 
colder blustery conditions will develop along the eastern areas of the Continental Divide. There are the wind gusts and there's going to be some higher wind gusts, but this is for today and tomorrow put together. So you can see very windy across Nebraska, South Dakota, Eastern Wyoming, the wind prone areas of Interstate 80, South Pass. You're going to get some very strong winds in the foothills around Cody and Matitsi and up into the plains of Montana. So be ready for the winds down into Rocky Mountain National Park as well. So the wind, probably the biggest feature, but there is going to be some snow with it. Moisture today through Thursday morning. So this is today through Thanksgiving morning looks like this. And you can see the path of the upper level low here across the north. This moisture right here is associated with the current upper level low in northwest Kansas. But when we put it together and look at the snow potential, so you can see through Thursday morning, biggest problems are going to be North South Dakota, Minnesota, Montana, the mountain passes of the northern and central Rockies. A little bit of snow will fall on the plains. Not a lot, but there will be a little bit. So watch out for a few slick spots because it is going to be much colder. For the nation through Thursday morning, heavier snow in the northern Great Lakes, lake effect snows in the Great Lakes region getting into the upstate New York with the colder air moving very quickly. I mean, this first upper level low is going to transit the lower 48 very, very quickly. And what that's going to do is that's going to kind of grease the wheels for the next one. Temperature anomalies by tomorrow afternoon look like this. So it is colder. I, it's not brutally cold, but certainly it's a lot colder coming on in with this next air mass as it pushes on through. This is the temperature anomaly by late tomorrow afternoon and evening. For Thanksgiving Day, this is midday Thanksgiving Day. You can see the cold going into the Midwest and the Great Lakes. But along and west of the divide here, the cold not yet is not going to be moving in. But along and east of the divide is where the cooler air spills in. So this takes us through Thanksgiving morning. Then as we get into the day on Friday, there's going to be a little ripple of Pacific moisture coming in in the northwest flow. Northwest flow in the cold season, if there's Pacific moisture with it, does tend to produce banded snow showers and uh, mountain snow. So this is a new little wrinkle that's showing up. So as we get into the day on Friday, and then as we get into Saturday, you can see the ridge of high pressure building in the Pacific. And what do you notice up in the blue areas there north of Hudson Bay? See that? There's your Arctic air mass starting to make its move right there. Notice right here that the winds aloft are coming straight from the polar regions, pushing into Alberta and Saskatchewan. This is by noon on Saturday. And this low is going to settle down and come down here because the high is building, displacing the colder air and moving it south. So if we take a look at what's coming in that Friday, Saturday morning time frame, there's going to be this another wave coming through. So if you're traveling Friday into early Saturday, you may encounter this. Some more snow in Montana, more snow for the Dakotas, getting further south into Iowa, eastern Nebraska into the Colorado and Wyoming Rockies, you're starting to get some snow as well with that system. So there's a little bit of a wrinkle for potential icy roads and snowy roads and colder temperatures. Certainly this is not a big snowstorm by any means, but if you're going to be traveling, especially Interstate 90, you're going to want to keep an eye on, eye on that I-25 as well and maybe the higher elevations of Interstate 80. That sets the stage then for Thanksgiving weekend. And as we've been showing you, we still see this, the high building in the Gulf of Alaska, the trough coming on in. And what you have here are two things working together. You have the counterclockwise spin around the upper level low here. And then as we showed you in the other map earlier, follow the lines and you're going to see the counterclockwise flow spinning around that low, sending Arctic air southward. So what ends up happening is you get the displacement of very cold air here pushing south along the continental divide while the counterclockwise flow around the low brings up higher humidity air and there you set up a collision between air masses. So this is right around noontime roughly on Sunday. So when you put this together it's easy to kind of describe what's happening up high. Up high is going to be here with the counterclockwise flow around the low, down low is going to be where the Arctic air is going to be. Remember, Arctic air is like 
it's more dense, it's heavier, so it's gonna be closer to the ground. So the Arctic air is gonna hug close to the ground. This system is gonna pump warmer, moist air up over the Arctic air that's gonna be close to the ground because it's more dense, it's gonna to go to the lowest point of gravity. And this is best displayed by taking a look at the pressures. So what I want you to focus on is this H up here in British Columbia. This is around noontime Saturday. If you follow these red and orange lines and these black solid lines, this high right here represents some of the cooler air that comes behind the cold front, that little wave that comes through on Friday. So you can see there's some cool air backed up against the Continental Divide by this orange color. This is around noon Saturday. Look what happens by noon Sunday. You can see the Arctic air is sliding down the east slopes of the Canadian Rockies, textbook. And then you can see that the Arctic air is penetrating into Montana overnight Saturday into Sunday. And if you follow these black lines, you're getting upslope. Winds are gonna be easterly here and northeasterly as the Arctic surge comes in. So this is by Sunday morning. And as you take a look at the moisture, we talked about the moisture coming up and over the Arctic air boundary by Sunday morning, which is gonna be right here. Now, when you have Arctic air, it's gonna be naturally very, very dry. So you have very dry air, Arctic air here. You expect that, but you see where the blue and the green is interfacing and in the white areas here. So you get a band of snow that falls along the collision of the two boundaries. And how intense the collision is, is gonna dictate how much snow you're gonna get. By Monday morning, the Arctic high is in north central Nebraska. So this is best represented as showing you the cold core of air that's coming down with this Arctic surge. And if you look at temperature anomalies by Saturday, looks like you're gonna need to bundle up for Christmas parades Saturday evening. By Sunday around noon, the anomaly looks like this. And by Monday, there's your core of the Arctic air and you're looking at 30 to 40 degrees below the seasonal averages underneath those purple areas there. So that's going to create the next salvo of winter weather. And this last salvo will be the bigger one in terms of on a geographic scale. It's going to be larger, covering more territory. Now trying to figure out snow amounts, we're too far away for that. As we get closer, we'll try to focus in on that. But there's going to be quite a bit of weather associated with that third surge. And if we look at cumulatively the snow that will fall in icy conditions between now and the last day of Thanksgiving weekend, that'll be Sunday, you can see the snow getting south of Interstate 80, snow in the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains. I mean, if you, if you wanna pick an area where the travel is really gonna be quite poor throughout that whole period, it's likely gonna be in this area right here because there's gonna be some wind into the area. And while you may not get a ton of snow with the Arctic temperatures coming in, that snow's gonna stick and conditions are gonna get icy. And along these boundaries, you're gonna get icy conditions. So this is where we're having freezing rain potential with the weather as it comes through between now and next Sunday. Even some thunderstorms in East Texas down along the Gulf Coast could happen on Saturday. So when you talk about airport delays, as we get into the Thanksgiving weekend is where we're gonna have the biggest headaches. Reminder, as we highlighted on Friday, we are producing a regional travel forecast Monday through Fridays, released about three o'clock mountain time, Monday through Fridays, and we'll update them on weekends if necessary. Have yourself a great Monday. We'll see you tomorrow.